What's going on y'all? So today I'm going to be swapping out my TPS because I'm having some type of like idle issue. My revs, <clears throat> they go up, they go down, and they sometimes fluctuate. I originally wasn't going to make this video. I was just going to swap it out, but I figured I'd make one and let y'all know things to look for and like common issues that you might have that may be an indicator that your TPS has gone bad. In a box like this, you're going to get a whole bunch of packing peanuts, depending on what you order. But I went ahead and picked up the TPS and the jumper harness. I believe this was like $26, but go ahead and pick this up. This is going to save you a lot of headache, and it's just going to make everything a lot easier. But here are the part numbers, part number for the TPS, part number for the jumper harness. So at the TPS, you're gonna get these uh, screws, which I don't really like these too much just because an Allen head is a lot easier to remove and install. And we'll see that, some stickers, uh, more stickers. And along with that, you're gonna need a multimeter or a K-Pro and K-Tuner, which I have, but I will show y'all how to use both to set up your TPS. Once you got the hood popped up, go ahead and go to your throttle body, and this is where your TPS is gonna be located at. And with the old TPS removed, you can see how this kind of sits in there. It's just gonna sit in there like so. So once you get that in place, you're gonna go ahead and take this jumper harness, and you can see that these ends are exposed. So here's the clip that's gonna clip into the TPS just like that. And then this bottom wire, that's gonna be your ground. And then this middle wire, that's gonna be your signal input. So go ahead, plug this in, just like you normally would. That right there like so. This one right here. And then you're gonna need to go ahead and grab your multimeter. All right, so once you got the multimeter and the car on, Forgot to mention, but make sure you don't tighten these down all the way because you're still going to need to adjust it some. So I'm going to have the instructions for how to cal this in the description, but it's pretty easy. They recommend not using a ground on the chassis and then tapping into the signal wire, but to use the ground on the TPS and the signal wire. So take your black lead, the ground over here to the right, and then the middle one is going to be your signal wire. And you can see I'm off quite a ways. I'm gonna rotate this, I believe, up, oh, should do the trick. All right, there we go, it's 0.48. So what I recommend is go ahead and tighten these, maybe like, uh, just a half turn, maybe a full turn, and then to go back and verify that tightening this did not adjust your TPS any. Because having this at 4.9 is fine. It's recommended to start at 4.8 and then make the increment to 4.9 if need be, and then 0.5. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down and I'll show y'all how to cal it with the K-Tune. So real quick, I wanna show y'all what they were talking about um, using the uh, car's chassis or the negative battery to read the uh, TPS. So right here, if I go and put both leads, no, I'm sorry, a lead on the TPS and a lead on the negative, it's reading 0.52, which is out of range. But if I come to the TPS itself, it's reading 0.49, so, I just go ahead and go with their recommendation and use the ground on the TPS and the signal wire instead of using a ground on the car somewhere. So with the car on and with a battery tender hooked up, go ahead, plug that into your computer and boot up K-Tune. So before you do anything, uh, with like pretty much anything in life, go ahead and make sure you save your backup, make a backup, whatever. You're just going to go in here, file, open tune, save as, and then label it base or OG tune or whatever. Probably not base, but anyways, you're going to have this opened up and then you're going to download the base code that is on the ECU. All right, cool. Now with the map downloaded from the ECU on KTuner, we're going to go into main parameters, scroll down to find TPS calibration. 
And then I don't really like this too much, but all you're gonna do is click zero. And then that's it. There's no verification or confirmation, I should say, that it was calibrated. Click that, make sure that blue was highlighted. And then that is it. You're gonna go over here. You're gonna go upload uh, base tune or uh, base code, I believe it was. And like I said, make sure your car's on a battery tender. I'm gonna go verify that mine is hooked up because I did this and it wasn't on a battery tender and it corrupted whenever it was trying to upload. I had to recover my ECU and then luckily I had saved my tune or else I would have been SOL. And with that verified, we can go ahead and go to the next step, click yes. It's gonna to communicate to the ECU. Right now it's erasing the ECU. This is the scary part because now there's no tune on there. Um, ECU is erased and now reflash. So like I was saying, this is where I ran into an issue before with not having the battery tender hooked up. It got to maybe like 20% and boom, that was it. Car wouldn't start, it would crank, but it would not run. And so if you have an issue, it's gonna come up with a retry, recover and dismiss, I think. Just go ahead, recover, it's gonna wipe it, load a bass tune, and then hopefully you have your tune saved and then just flash your tune from there and you'll be good. Go ahead, reflash has been done. We're gonna key off and hit okay. After five seconds, uh, key the vehicle on and hit okay to continue. You can give it more than five seconds. All right, so after five seconds, key the vehicle on. I usually wait for the beeps to go. Click okay. All right, so that's pretty much it on the Acuity TPS installation and calibration. It's pretty simple, not much to it, but make sure you get that harness because that's gonna save you a lot of trouble. But yeah, if your car's still acting up, maybe adjust it to within the range 0 0.48, 9, or 0 0.5. That should fix your issue. I was also having an issue with uh, idle air control valve, so you might be having that issue too if this doesn't fix it, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I will catch y'all in the next one. Later.